Good morning. It's good to see you all this morning. Hope you are all being safe and that you are all healthy and well. Today is Wednesday, April 8th, 2020, and we commemorate William Augustus Muhlenberg, priest. A couple of announcements. Make sure you look for Ruth's Word of the Day, which posts every morning. And also remember that you can contact us if you have any special needs. If you need essential supplies or anything like that, we can get someone to come get them for you, to go get them for you. And so we hope that you're all doing well. It's uh, Holy Wednesday in the church calendar, but as I said, we are commemorating uh, William Augustus Muhlenberg today. And Muhlenberg was the great-grandson of Henry Melchior Muhlenberg, the Patriarch of the Lutheran Church in America. His day is October 7th. And the son of Frederick Augustus Muhlenberg, the first Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives. He was born on, in Philadelphia on September 16th, 1796. He and his sister grew up in an English-speaking home attended Sunday school at Christ Episcopal Church near their home because of its use of English. Well, remember that many Lutheran churches still use the language of the of the of the parent country and most in Pennsylvania that parent country was overwhelmingly German. <clears throat> he he grew to love the service and the music at the Episcopal Church. He graduated from the University of Pennsylvania in 1814 and was ordained an Episcopal priest in 1817. There had been a great deal of movement from the Lutheran Church when it insisted on the use of German in worship to the Episcopal Church on the part of those who preferred to use the English language, not only in business but in worship also. In New York City, the first entirely English Lutheran congregation or, or organized in the United States, Zion, 1796, lost its pastor and a considerable number of its members to the Episcopal Church in 1805, and the remainder of their members and their pastor in 1810. The New York Ministerium had even officially declared that the Protestant Episcopal Church was the English Lutheran Church to which all Lutherans preferring English to German should be directed. William, William Muhlenberg and served a parish in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and there apparently suffered a severe disappointment in love. He never married, and he understood this state to free him for a variety of ministries. He served as head of a boys' school in Flushing, Queens, New York, and the use of music, the first boys' choir in New York, Flowers, color, and the emphasis on the church year there had a powerful influence on the boys, and many influential churchmen came from the school. Unhappy with the metrical psalter that had served as the hymnal of the Episcopal Church, he wrote hymns, some of which are still sung, and edited hymnals for the church. In 1846, he became rector of the Church of the Holy Communion, founded by his sister at 20th Street and 6th Avenue in New York City, where his social conscience and liturgical emphasis was evident. The pews were free, not rented, like they used to be back in the olden times. There was a parish school, an unemployment fund, visits by poor, visits by poor children to the country. Holy Communion was at the center of life of the parish, as its name indicated. And in, and in this church in 1852, Anne Ayers founded the Sisterhood of the Holy Communion, communion patterned after the Deaconess community in Germany. She and her pastor founded St. Luke's Hospital in 1857, and Muhlenberg made his home there for the rest of his life. He died April 6, 1877. St. Luke's, by the way, still survives to this day, although it's not known as that anymore. It is known as, uh, it's a school of, it's a series of hospitals known as now Mount Sinai Morningside. <clears throat> Muhlenberg died April 6, 1877. His concern for, mute, for worship and for evangelism advanced for his time, 
nonetheless prepared the ground for later liturgical reform and ecumenical activity. He embodied both the Lutheran tradition and the Anglican tradition that would later be joined in the agreement between the Episcopal Church and the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, authorizing intercommunion and the mutual recognition of ministry. William Augustus Muhlenberg was added to the calendar in the American Prayer Book of 1979. Take a moment to prepare our hearts for worship. We'll read Psalm 133 together. How very pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of the Lord. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. Our reading is from the letter to the Ephesians. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But, speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. I have a special treat for you today. This is from the Old Service Book and Hymnal. This is the hymnal used by many of the ELCA predecessor bodies. It's the, sometimes you'll hear people call it the Old Red Hymnal, and it was released in 1958. This is one of Muhlenberg's hymns, and we'll get to sing it together. Not only that, but I do have organ accompaniment for the first three verses. So, We'll, see, we'll have that for the first three, but then we're, we're going to get to sing verse four without accompaniment. But I thought it was kind of neat, so we're just going to get to do this here. Savior, who thy flock art feeding, with the shepherd's gentlest care, all the feeble gently leading, while the lambs thy bosom share. Now these little ones receiving, fold them in thy gracious arm, there we know thy word be. Only they're secure from harm. Never from thy pasture roving, let them be the lion's prey. Let thy tenderness so loving keep them through life's dangerous way. Then within thy fold eternal, let them find a resting place. Feed in pastures ever vernal, drink the rivers of thy grace. Amen. Uh, 
Let us pray for the church, the world, and for all of those in need. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. We pray for our bishops, Elizabeth and Bill, for all rostered and lay leaders of the Northwest Minnesota Synod, for all, for all church leaders here in Alexandria and Douglas County, as they, as they live into a new day and try to proclaim your word in new and creative ways. We pray for all of those who are sick and suffering, the poor, the neglected, the unemployed, those who suffer, especially those who suffer from COVID-19. We beg for your mercy upon those who are those hospitals in New York City and in Washington State and all those places that are understaffed and are um, all those places that need your divine mercy and your divine healing. We pray for Mount Sinai Morningside Hospital, formerly St. Luke's Hospital in New York City. We pray for a deeper understanding of the Holy Communion as the spring of the Christian life. We pray for those who would improve the quality of hymns in the church and the quality of music. We pray for a broad and tolerant spirit throughout the church and for increasing ecumenical partnerships. We lift up those who are others who are sick and suffering, those on our prayer list, and those we name before you now, silently or aloud. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant us, O Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. One thing I forgot was the reading that was appointed for Muhlenberg today, for his day. And this is from Theodore L. Kyler, Recollections of a Long Life. He was one of the most apostolic men, Muhlenberg, I've ever known. His gray head, all men knew in New York. He commanded attention everywhere by his genial face and hearty manner of speech. When very near the end, the chaplain of the hospital prayed at his bedside for his recovery. Let us have an understanding about this, said Muhlenberg. You are asking God to restore me, and I am asking God to take me home. There must not be any contradiction in our prayers, for it is evident that he cannot answer them both. This was characteristic of his bluff frankness as well as his heavenly mindness, mindedness. He would not live always. Let us pray. Do not let your church close its eyes, O Lord, to the plight of the poor and neglected, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, the lonely and those who have none to care for them. Give us the vision and compassion with which you so richly endowed your servant, William Augustus Muhlenberg, that we may labor tirelessly to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you this day and always. And I will see you back here again tomorrow morning.